Hi everyone, in this video what we're going to learn is how to connect two applications, SAF and Xamarin, um, through a shared data layer, which will be connecting to the database through a REST API, not with a direct connection. So this is a quite common scenario nowadays. Everyone wants to move from SAF to Xamarin and or mix both technologies, right? SAF and Xamarin. So the easiest way to do that is to share the ORM. But how do you connect to a Postgres, for example, from Xamarin? Uh, you cannot do uh, TCP IP connections or NetPipes connections. So the one option is WCF, but WCF is kind of problematic with .NET Core and .NET Standard and in general with Xamarin. So after giving it a lot of thought, we decide to just re-implement the data store and do it through a REST API. So in this case is like quite practical because it's really easy to um, to create a service that will expose a database or more than one database in this case. So to show you the idea, let, let's do a demo application. Uh, I think the code will explain it better than my own words. So let's open a Visual Studio. Let's create a new project. And we have created these packages, the agnostic data store server and the agnostic data store client, which should be around here. This is the company main repository. So in here we have all the packages that we create for SAF and XPO. So basically what we need to do is we need to set up a server and then in the SAF application and summary application, we need to set up a client. So it's quite easy, just a few lines of code. Basically, actually no lines of code, only configuration. So what we need to do first is we're going to create uh, maybe a SAF application. Let's start with SAF. This will be REST data store demo. And we're going to do web and windows. And that's it. Okay. Let's rebuild this. Good, it's working. So let's create a folder. This will be SAF. Let's put everything there. Now let's uh, add a new application. In this case, a new project. Let's do the summary application. And this will be summary form rest demo. Okay, and create. And let's do master detail in this case, iOS and Android. So, so far so good. We have two applications. Let's compile this one and let's run it basically. You'll have to bear with me here because you know how summary application takes time to compile. So <coughs> let's wait for a little bit and let's run it at least one time before we continue with the setup. So let's see, this is the building output. 
all is generating the app right now and we have a new emulator here running so we will see when it basically runs we're actually just compiling right now we're not um, running it I think because I have not selected the emulator here or anything I think this will take like one minute so I will like cut this part of the video from the from the final version Oh, it's done. <laughs> uh, let's see. Set this as a startup project. And let's just run it to see that everything is okay. So let's see. Well, it's running. Everything's fine so far. So what we're going to do, I'm going to stop this. And I'm going to create a new folder. And let's put all these here. So I put them in the subfolder. It's here. Okay. Now we have like two applications, well, three applications. One is a sub application where Windows, so two versions, and then a summary, which is also two versions, then it's for iOS and Android. <coughs> So now it's, uh, it's time to do somehow like, uh, I, I think this is a decision that you have to make quite often, especially we do it in the office a lot, that we usually try to not be so bound to, to stuff. We like to be more in the XPO level. So for that, I'm going to come here and I'm going to create a new project. And this project will be a class library. And I'm going to call this just ORM. Okay. So let's see. The sub application is in version 19.1, which is actually 19.1.3. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to install in this the new edge of XPO, 19.1.3. And let's look at white oh, everywhere. So let's do this one. I think I need to compile this first and then actually install this one. And okay, now we have the the package for XPO installed and this match or or implementation of of SAF in this case. So so far so good. So let's create a new persistent class. Um, let's see. we're going to do something like these items. So basically I'm going to copy this to here. 
and this one I'm going to <coughs> change it to DevExpress XPO and it's going to be an XPO object then we need to add the missing constructors and then we need to change this and this ID takes a description we're going to change it for uh, XPO properties and I'm going to comment out this one because we're going to replace it okay so um, let's see this should compile okay and let's rename this so it it will match the file name the name file to match the type okay so we have our common ORM we have a SAF application and a summary application so it's time to start sharing the code so let's add a reference to the ORM ORM and another reference to the ORM okay so so far so good let's compile this And I think there's a repository pattern in here in, in the template, summary template. So, so we're going to basically, um, we're just going to replace this method, but in the end, in the full project, I will uh, do the complete implementation, so you can add from summary and read from from SAF in this case. So I will just change the the this um, uh, method basically. because here it will return the item list so okay it's perfect so let's see let's import the namespace and everything should be fine and working are we missing somewhere else one more time or one last time okay so right now we have the share ORM which is compiling I think still we're missing some okay let's check again the ORM should be compiling and also the summary in shared project 
or diagnostic rate, as you name it. Okay. And let's see. Oh, here we also have the reference. So you know that in SAF you need to register the persistent objects. So let's go to do that. For that, let's go to the module. And in here we have uh, this method. So, well, we can use the designer also. Let's use the designer instead. I, I think it will be easier. So we have the reference assemblies here in the exported types. And let's see. I'm not seeing my ORM. That um, there is a possibility that this is compiled with a with an older version of the Net framework. That's why you don't see it. I mean, we don't see it in this case. So let's close this. Let's double check for the. Um, for the uh, version, oh, it's 4.7.2, so it should be okay. We just need to rebuild this then. And let's see reference assemblies. And ah, we still don't see it. Why? Why? Why is this? Let's see reference. ORM is there. So, well, let's try to do this by code. This is somehow strange, but this things happen from time to time and my studio is not behaving quite well these days so let's see where do we I think it's an override public override No, it's not here, so uh, what I'm going to do is <coughs> I'm going to create a new class, a new XPO, XPO object, and I'm going to inherit it from item, just to make sure that the compiler is not eating the reference. This, again, is something that you might not have to do, but in my case is that uh, Visual Studio is not working that well for me lately, and I've been like just too busy to to set up everything again. Okay, this is why we don't see it. So uh, one is um, 19.5, and the other one is 19.3. So let's see. That's the main problem. So that we can fix easily. Let's reveal this. We don't need this fake object anymore. We just need to check um, why we were not able to see the, the item object. So we just compile, we close everything, and let's open the designer again. And now we see our reference assembly, the ORM, 
and let's include this. Uh, I will show you what this does. So if we see the code, it in the designer, I think it is, in the additional exported types. Let's wait for this to load the file. See, my suit is like quite strange lately. So additional exported type is uh, we add item, which is in another uh, uh, assembly. OK, so good. We have now we have registered the type, but we still need to make a menu item with it. So for that, um, let's go here. And let's use the type info. And let's find type info. And this requires either the type name or the type type. So type of item. So let's import this. So this is item type info. So we have the variable now. Uh, and with this, uh, is basically the metadata of the object, so we can add attributes and stuff like that. So what we're going to what we're going to do is here we're going to add attribute, and we're going to add a new default class options attribute. And good, that will make a navigation item with with um, that um, object. So let's compile again. And so far, so good. We have Samarin, uh, SAF, and our, our share ORM. So now is the it's time for the black magic. We're going to add um, ISP.NET Core service we're going to add a data store agnostic server. Uh, this is a project template that I create for our own, for our own um, project, I mean for our technology. So you can just change a few lines of code and it will be working for you. So um, let's create this one next. So this is going to be, let's just name it, um, XPO server. Okay, let's compile this. And okay, succeed. So let me show you what we have in here. We have three controllers. Uh, first, the test controller, which is the easiest one to explain. Um, this only returns three words, hello, XPO, and rest. With this, you will make sure that your application is actually running and working, that your server is working. Um, then you have the agnostic, the data store agnostic controller which basically inherit from one of our controllers. So all the implementation is already inside of this class. So basically you just need to inherit from this and that's it. And the same goes for the multi database. So the difference is that this will serve one single data store and this can serve more than one data store. So let's check the program. This 
are some boilerplate lines that you might need to use in the future to unlock the, the component because this, um, this is just a preview of a commercial component. And this line is also to load the license. Once you have it, you just uh, write the file in here so we can load the license. Uh, so far, this will work for everyone in, if you're running it from the studio. Uh, you cannot do release versions right now because we have set some code to avoid that because it's still somehow experimental. But when I say it's experimental, I mean uh, it's one of our first commercial products as Nougat. So the technology is quite mature. We have used it in several projects already. So we know that it works fine. Uh, what is experimental is our licensing system. So uh, that's why right now it's in this mode, but we want everyone to give it a try. So that's why you can use it in, in the book mode, but not in release mode. So that's so far for, uh, for the licensing stuff. You don't need to worry about that, at least for now. And then the startup. In the startup, use the a configuration of the services, basically, and also some boilerplate code on how to create a connection string, uh, how to create a connection to SQLite, for example, how to read the connection string from, from the app settings JSON. So it's only like information that you might need at this moment. That's why it's there. Um, I somehow hate the comments in the code, but in this case, it's like, I think it's okay. It's enough for you to understand what you need to do next. So now let's go and check the connections on the settings. So right now there's one connection called connection string. And in this case, we are using name, user, and password. So I'm going to write the password. It's my super secret password, YYC. And a lot of people will understand what is this. It is a song from the band Roche, which I'm a big fan, actually. So I use that as, a, as, as the password that I use for stuff that I want to share, that I don't care that much. So this is the password. And we have the database should be called MyDB and let's go to SQL Server. And I have one here from one uh, demo that I did before, but I'm going to delete everything. And there is no databases right now. Okay, perfect. So we have one database here, but we can serve more than one. In this case, I'm going to leave it like this um, because this video is already long. So I will show all the other functionalities later. I just want to show the main functionality that is go, that is do the communication of the data store through a REST API instead of the database connection. So, uh, well, uh, that's, all that we need to do for the server. So just let's run it one, one time and see. Oh, I need to run this on, with administrator permissions because it's going to run on IIS instead of IIS Express. So let's wait a little bit. And restart the studio. Okay, so let's run this. We were waiting for this to start again to run it.
Okay, it's, it's working because if the test controller works, uh, it will show these three words. So it's fine. Oh, I need to run it again. I need. I forgot to copy the URL. This is the URL. We just need to replace this for my local IP. And good, it's working. So I'm going to put this in a notepad. This one. Well, now that we have the URL, um, what we need to do is to do the configuration of the client. So for that, what we're going to do is manage packages. And we're going to do from all. And we need the agnostic data store client. Okay, the client, we're going to send a, set a reference on the at the application level, basically. Web Windows, and then EOS and Android. And also in this case, we will need it in the share here. And this should be, should match the version of XPO or sub that is locally running, which is 19.1.3. So let's do this again. But regarding the server, it doesn't need to match the server because the server is in 18. I want to show the, I want to do a demonstration that the server can be running in XPO 18 and the clients can be in 19, 20 or whatever you, you have. So let's run this. Okay, then it's working. So let's close all of this. So basically now that we have the client, what we, we need to register it and then we need to set up the connection string. So for register an XPO provider, data store provider, we go basically to the start point of the application and we can put it here. So I have created this demo before this video, so I, I, I will just copy paste that line. Oh, well, it's not here, it's not open, so I'm going to have to write it, so bit. Uh, XPO, place at the store. Agnostic, it's a huge line. register but of course you don't need the full namespace let's remove all of this it's just this line it's short okay <coughs> so now uh, after that um, when we register this well we let's do that for the uh, web application in the web application you have to do it in the global attacks you do it in application start so here We import the namespace and bam, it's working. So let's see. We just need to change the connection strings and that's it. So let's go come here. And I'm going to open the old solution. So I can show you that. I think it's this one. Well, it's not. I, it looks like I deleted it. 
Well, let's open the source code of this implementation. So here I have a connection string. I'm going to copy all of this. And let's go here. I'm going to delete the connection string to the database and put my connection string. So well, remember that we saved the URL of the service before. So let's replace that also. This is the URL of the service, not this one. So, okay, uh, this, let's try to understand this. Uh, it, this is like um, the variable who will receive the name of the data store implementation that we have. This can be MySQL, SQL Server, whatever. But in this case, it's this one. This is the name of our component. So then the endpoint. The endpoint is basically a URL. So this is the URL where this is running. And this is the controller that we're going to connect to the multi DB. And then we can put an authentication token. Uh, if we implemented authentication in the API, in this case is not implemented. I'm going to show that in a separate video. So to make it easier is without token right now. And this is the data store ID. The data store ID basically is the name of the connection string on the app settings JSON. So in here, it will look for this one. So if you have more than one, you can have like 10. You have database one, two, three, and you have different connection strings. The connection string can be to a different type of database server. Also, it can be MySQL, Postgres, or I don't know, SQLite if you want. <coughs> So basically, uh, it's not, that's what we need to do is like, we're pointing to the correct um, URL and we set the data store ID. So now we just need to run this. So let's go to do, to change the startup project. So we're going to do, to have multiple startup projects. We're going to start the win application right now and we're going to start the XPO server. And that's it. Let's run it and see how it goes. Okay, so the service is working already and the application is starting. So let's check the database first. We should have one table that is called item. And there is no data so far. So let's do one item. Item ID is going to be demo, text, hello, XPO, description, hola, XPO. We save and let's go and check the date again. Bam, now it's here. Good. So Let's do another one. We save. And okay, we have two records. So, so far, so good. It's working fine. 
So what I'm going to do now is let's work a little bit on the Xamarin application. <coughs> so in the Xamarin application, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the to the app, and first, basically, what I need to do is I need to set up a data layer. So for that, I'm going to copy some code from the unit test that we have. And just put it here. So we need to import the namespaces. Basically, this is the um, is the process that you will do if you are making a a console application in XPO or any application that is not SAF because SAF somehow hides this type of code, this part of the code. In this case, it's not. It's, this is how uh, a console application which uses XPO should start basically. So there is no black magic in here, it's all XPO basically. And here is item. And what we need to do is we need to change the connection string. Okay, and well, we have the connection string. Then this we don't need. We don't need. I'm going to remove this code. And basically, uh, we register the the data store provider. We create the connection string. We create the data store. Then we do a reflection dictionary which will contain all the persistent classes that we will use. In this case, it's only one, which is item. And then we will check that the schema is updated, that that table actually exists. I mean, the table that represents that object. So this is XPO code. Usually, you never see it if you're using stuff, but uh, this is how an XPO application works, basically. And then we have a data store. Um, and a dictionary, so with this we can create data layers basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to set XPO default data layer to this one. So this is static variable, it will be shared in all the applications. So now let's go to here, to the mock data store. And in here there is a list of items. This list of items I'm going to um, I'm going to comment this. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new mock items. And mock item is going to be a new XPO collection. Of item. And I'm just going to do it like this so I load everything that is there, and since I'm not passing a session or anything, it should connect to the default data store. So I think, I hope it's just this. I mean, uh, I never use that Xamarin template, so, well, the logic said that it should work. <laughs> um, so let's do properties again, and let's put all of these as the startup project. So we will have the Android project, the server, and the Windows project also running. So we have three projects starting. And let's see how it goes. So if everything is fine, we should be able to see on the server inside whatever we enter on, on SAS.
I guess this will take some time because you know how Xamarin applications are. So let's see. I will open the emulator here and put it just in the side. And let's see. The server is already working now. The Windows application should be starting. And then the summary. Okay, we have two out of three. And see, we have the same data. I don't know if this template implement the refresh, but let's just give it a try. Um, this will be, it works. First run. So we save and let's see. No, this does not implement. Let's go to about and maybe when we navigate back, we will load the data again. No, this doesn't. Well, so. We have to run it again to see it work. So let's stop. Maybe we can do something else here. Let's see in the service. Uh, in the data store. It should be maybe in the view model. I know. Okay, so when we're getting all the items, we just do a wait and do the result of the items. What we should do here is the same code. Um, so let's do this and let's put this here. And what we should do is first clear the items. And I think that will be enough. So let's run this again. So let's wait a little bit. And let's see, I'm kind of excited about this. It's like, it's quite easy now. OK, 
Okay, we have three items here, and let's see the summary application. We have three, three items here. So let's do a fourth item. Numero cuatro. That's Spanish. Numero cuatro, numero cuatro, numero cuatro. Save. And let's see. And we have numero cuatro. Oh, that's so great. So let's try to edit one also. Uh, hello XPO from SAF. Save from SAF. Oh, this is amazing. So, well, uh, I'm really happy this demo went really smooth. So, well, that's, that's what it is basically. Uh, it's a new way to communicate XPO that you don't need to go through a database connection, you can go through an API. And also what I want to show you is something that is quite important also. Maybe at the beginning you don't see the need of this, but when you have more and more and more projects, um, you, will, uh, you will have some projects in one version of XPO and stuff, some in other. So what I want to so what I want you to notice here is that if you see the servers, it's running on XPO 18, but SAF is in 19.1.3 and also Xamarin. So that, that's why this is called agnostic data store, because the server and the client, they don't need to necessarily match on versions. Otherwise, you will have to deploy a server for each version of XPO that you're using. In this case, you don't need it. And basically is one service for all your databases and you can communicate all your applications um, with the same service. So that's uh, part of the, the things that we wanted to have in this type of technology. In this, that's why we make this type of server basically. So, well, that's it. Um, the link for the repository, GitHub repository will be in the description of this video and also for the Nuget um, source, so you can download all packages. Also, I will put there the the template, the project template, so you can have it. So you can just add add new bid data store agnostic server, as I did here. So that's basically it. And well, I'm really happy with this video. So uh, I cannot wait to share the code with you guys. So bye, uh, take care, and. All questions or doubts that you have are welcome. Just write, write into the, in the group, in the Facebook group. So, well, again, thanks and bye.